So, Gina, <laughs> what better way to welcome you back to the show than to give you the top headline this week? <laughs> Top headline. I'm honored. <laughs> um, this is really cool, actually. I'm kind of excited about it. So yesterday, Google announced a new thing, Material Design Lite. Um, this is basically gives web developers the CSS and the HTML, JavaScript to make web apps or web pages. They don't even really have to be apps. Material design, you know, look and feel, the floating action buttons, the hamburger menu, all, all the, the interactions. Um, this is unlike Polymer, which is Google's uh, which is a more interactive back-end, front-end focused framework. This material design light is just the front-end. Um, so it's framework agnostic. It can work with any code that you've already got running. If you've got a web page, you can use this. And um, gzipped package comes in under 27 KB kilobytes. And the code is on GitHub and at getmdl.io, uh, MDL for material design light. And I, you know, I just, I love this idea and I'm excited about it. And I'm actually trying to, looking through all my websites, seeing which ones I can, <laughs> I could use this for because I mean if you can do if you can make an HTML page if you know any HTML at all like using material design light is not that much of a leap it's just it's all this prefab kind of CSS that will you know turn your button into a floating round button with the interactions of material design and uh, you know you could use it for a blog you could use it for you know just a, something as a simple kind of one page or marketing page and, and with any language so it looks really it looks really neat I, I like to say I love that and it's totally responsive too so it does all the things that material does on a big screen a big wide screen it looks good small screen tablet um, and I feel like for aspiring developers in particular like if you wanted to quickly kind of prototype out what what should my Android app look like you could do it with just some flat you know HTML pages using this so I think hmm. it's, I think it's pretty cool have, have you guys looked at this at all or Oh yeah, was I was. Kinda, yeah, uh, yeah, I was all over because like right up your alley. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, it was it was published on Medium, which was my app in the arena mm -hmm, last week. So mm -hmm. if you haven't voted, by the way, there's still time. <clears> um, but um, uh, yeah, no, I was all over it when I saw this came up, which I thought was interesting that Google developers setting up a channel and posting stuff directly to Medium, which is a whole other kind of mm -hmm. a side kind of conversation. But um, reading through it, I just thought it, I, I mean I thought a it was great to see it you know, written in such a way that is easy to absorb even for a non-developer who's interested in design and that sort of thing, but get enough to the technical side of things to get, you know, to the point where I'm like, ooh, I want to try this if I can find the time to actually play with this. Um, and I think the, the rapid prototyping idea, Gina, that you mentioned is a great idea um, because you probably run into way more people who are familiar with HTML and CSS than with Java or whatever you're doing for Android, you know, to do straight up to Android uh, yeah. coding. So that's a great, you know, to work with a developer who knows HTML CSS and say, here, learn this, and this will be one step closer to doing material design for the app is, is great. So. Like, yeah, absolutely. I think this is awesome. I think it's, I think it's great to get these tools into people's hands and to enable people to the ability to do this if they want to in an easier way. What I wonder, though, maybe this is just me being a little cynical. Uh-oh. But, no, no, let's, let's hear the other side. But material design works for me on Android because I feel like it's, it's Google's approach. It's Google's modern approach to Android, right? That's sure. kind of what it was born out of. And, and you know, sure, it was, material design was always intended to be this thing that, that spreads out beyond just Android yeah. and you know, also uh, Google, uh, Google's own sites and you know, onto yeah. the web with Polymer and all this kind of stuff. Um, I, I find myself having a little bit, like, I realize not every single site in the world is going to update to material design. Sure. But for some reason, it just seems weird bringing material design to the web beyond just like Google slash Android related things. But but what, but it's a, it's, it, mm -hmm. see, it's a, des and I'm sorry, uh, Gina, if you, you probably say this Ooh. much better than I could, but it's a design methodology. It's a design it approach. Is. It's not an Android But in my approach. brain, it's so associated well, sure. yeah, yeah, that it's hard but, for me to like erase that. I'm like, why, uh, why is your site in material design? I don't, I don't get it. Well, I mean, but if you look at what Google's doing, all of Google sites are material design. Yeah, no, the, the that IO makes sense site was material design. That makes perfect the sense to Google, me. The Google, Google Music update, which some people were complaining, but I think just to, that's just because people don't like change. I love the new Google Music site. I think it's mm -hmm. great. I do Although too. Although I really wish they would let me add a photo for bands because they some bands they know and they, they can pull a background photo in but then yeah. other bands and I listen to a lot of you know obscure small indie bands that they might not have heard of but I have photos of them I can upload them but anyway so yeah. um that's so a little I complaint I know and, and I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining because I love material design yeah but well, but I'm like well here's are a, a lot of sites like jumping at the chance to material design their sites that that well here's I mean, a practical I guess question they are if they have anything to do with like, you know like if they're fans of Google or fans yeah. of Android or whatever that like totally makes sense to me but why would anyone else do it well Gina are you going to redesign yeah. thinkup.com to be material design 
<laughs> well, it's so funny. I was having this conversation with my co-founder today because he was like, oh, this is great. So we use Bootstrap, which is basically the Twitter equivalent of Material Design Lite. Bootstrap has been out for many, many more years. It went open source. It's had hundreds of contributors. And it's basically built for like, when you're a coder, you're often building these like backend tools that your users aren't seeing. It's just kind of an internal thing. And you just need to slap together a form, you know, that just accepts some inputs. You know, I imagine Twit has a lot of these kind of internal tools like this. And Bootstrap is just a way to like, hey, here's make your internal dashboard or your, you know, content manager system look a little bit nicer. Um, so you're not using the, the, the web browser defaults, which a lot of web developers who are not designers will use. Um, so we, we rely a lot on Bootstrap. And I was talking to my co-founder. I was like, you know, Material is so great. Like, you know, if it's if it's as good as, as Bootstrap, you know, I would definitely consider moving over to it. And, you know, he was like, well, it's really new. Let's see how, you know, much it's maintained and how, how long, you know, what kind of life it has, whether or not Google is really behind it. Um, and, you know, it, when we did have this question of like, do I know of any other web apps besides Google apps? I, I use Inbox, Google Inbox in the browser. So I am using material kind of Google Keep. Yeah. Um, those are, I think, I think my two main apps that use material, but they're Google apps. Like, I, I don't know. I don't think that I've used a non-native Android app, a web app that's material based mm -hmm. on Polymer that, you know, that hasn't been Google. So maybe this is the reason why Material Design Lite is happening. Maybe this is Google's like, hey, we want to get this design system. We want to, you know, kind of get this out there and have it not dependent on our other technologies. Um, but I, you know, our decision anyway for ThinkUp was kind of like, all right, we're going to wait and see. You know, if this if this uh, sticks around and keep gets developed at the pace that Bootstrap did, um, but I loved Bootstrap. It saved a ton of time, a uh, ton of design time, and and you really you honestly can customize it too. And I, I imagine you can do the same with material with MDL. Um, so we'll see. But it took a long time to get there. So mm -hmm. we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I'm cur I'm curious what sites. I mean, I'm looking. I, I just did a quick search for what sites are using Material Design, um, and I don't think that many are because a lot of them are. Google sites. I mean, right. you know, like outside of Google, and maybe this is the this is the first step. I'm looking. There's a blog called MaterialDesignBlog.com. That, that doesn't make any sense. Why don't you just tell us what you write about? Seriously. <laughs> but it looks like it looks like they're using it. But to a certain, yeah, they they totally no, are they are using totally it. Using yeah, yeah, totally it, yeah. using Material it. So design. I wonder how they did that. But um, yeah. it's really nice, actually. Oh, so, there, but there it, but that makes sense, things. right? Right, because it's Cause a site it's about, about material design. design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I I think what it comes around to is, and and this was a this was a a fear that I had early on when material design was introduced, and we started to see it on Android. And thankfully, uh, that that fear has kind of been put to bed a little bit. But I find myself having it again here, which is just like doing material design, but still having some sort of personal identity or some yeah. sort of uh, mm -hmm. identifiable. So, um, so are you characteristic? You're, you're know what I mean? lumping material design in with Google's brand identity. I totally am. And yes. so, therefore, therefore, so if I took, if I'm going to make where in the world is crankyhippo.com, and mm. it's it's Which, a, it's a, it's a by great the way, new we site. never know. Yeah, so. it's a great new site where you yeah. can track track cranky hippo around the world and find out what Brian Burnett is up to, right? And mm -hmm. if I did it all material design and had nothing to do with Google mm -hmm. and never even did anything with Google, would you then see that site and think, oh, it's a Google site? I, you know what I would think? I, I think I would yeah. see it and, oh man, I, I feel like I'm going to get some hate for this, but I'd feel like to some degree it would be kind of like a templatized, kind of like a lazy approach to creating your site. Not lazy, and I know that sounds bad, yeah. but what I mean is like you sign up for WordPress or you sign up for, you know, whatever site and they have templates and you can go with the template that they give you. And yeah. I feel like material design is like a template, right? And, and that's exactly what it is. They're giving you tools to do it, but I feel like if that's all you're doing, well, then everybody can do it and there will be a million sites that look identical to each other and they're all going to be right. material design sites and they aren't going to have character because they all have the same character. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's tough. Yeah. personalizing it beyond that, I think, is, is kind of important. And this, how do you do that on a website? This actually, it's possible. I mean, it actually it actually reminds me of a sociological conversation, which I, I was just reading back. I just read a book about the New York hardcore scene in the 80s because that's the music that I like. Mm -hmm. And they talked about how it reached a point in the late 1980s where everybody was dressing the same. And, and it took a bunch of people to say, wait a minute, we're punk rock, we're hardcore, we're different than everyone. And we shun everyone else, but here we are all falling in line with a look. And aren't we just doing what we're trying to rebel against? You know, And so it becomes that kind of thing where just because once you accept something and it becomes um, homogenizing, mm -hmm. and then, then you lose any lack of personality or rebellion or spirit of change mm -hmm. um, because it's setting up restrictions or barriers around what you're supposed to do.
Right. So, so may, but I mean, maybe it's not a world where the entire web is supposed to be material design, but it could be. And it's a good starting point. Yeah. And then maybe that's the point. And, I mean, I think part of it is like material design maturing to the point where it's it's customizable enough that it yeah. isn't automatically recognizable. Like Bootstrap had this problem in the beginning where you could you can immediately tell if a site was a Bootstrap site, right? But as more people adopted it, more developers pushed the boundaries of what can be customized and wanted to make it their own, right? They wanted all the benefits without the telltale, you know, button, you know, showing what it is. And and I feel like if MDL can get to that point, although you know Google, one of Google's reasons, you know, people said that there are a bunch of material ports for Bootstrap. Bootstrap so their material design, like the community did, that Google didn't do specifically. But Google said, you know, we did MDL because, you know, while the community has done a great job, you know, they didn't always implement things exactly the way that we would have in material. So we really wanted to to show our kind of guiding hand. I mean, Google's really taking a, a very, a, a lot more, they kind of, so the pendulum swung the other way. They're taking a very strong leadership role in, in material design. I think that this is their, their push toward becoming the design company and sh yeah. showing like this is, this is the way that it should be be. And at this early stage, if this just dropped yesterday, I don't think it's very flexible. But if it gets the adoption, I think that it will become more customizable. My, my issue is more like I, and material design is just so touch optimized. Mm -hmm. Like so many yeah. of the interactions, the way the buttons react and the sliding, it's very touchscreen optimized. And I spend most of my day on a desktop, you know. Um, it, I still get surprised in inbox when I like tap the, you know, the, the compose button and that 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 menu flies out. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just, I guess, just me just sort of getting used to the system. But and I get we want everything to work the same across touchscreen and desktop and big screen and small screen. But I think I think sometimes it, it does feel like, oh, this should this is a native mobile app. I still have that right. divide kind of in my mind. Yeah.